Hey!
We want to say good morning to all of you, friends and family, our Vista Church family, as well as our El Paso Church family that are viewing us by the internet. We greet you in the wonderful and victorious name of Jesus. Amen. And uh, thank you for uh, being with us this morning. Um, we know that there are many options out there on Facebook and the internet, but thank you that you have joined with us this morning. And we're praying that you would have a blessed time in the Lord through worship and also through his word this morning. Say amen. amen. Just a few announcements before we start is, um, Next week is Communion Sunday, and we want to invite you to join us uh, on the internet, on our uh, church Facebook for Communion. Um, for our church folks, there will be some uh, communion elements that we'll uh, distribute here at the church on Saturday around noon. 
But you know what? Even if you don't get any, it's okay because you can use whatever you have at home to join us in communion. Uh, juice and bread, whatever that you may have, you can use and we'll do communion next Sunday. So we invite you to join us in our communion service uh, next Sunday. Also, don't forget about our Wednesday service at 6.30. Uh, you can also join us on that uh, on our uh, church Facebook page, which will be posted uh, while we're doing the service. So, but let's pray and let's go to the word of the Lord. Amen. Lord, we ask that you bless the word this morning, bless the reading of your word, and also, Lord, as it go forth, may it touch a heart of those, the hearts of those that are viewing on the internet, uh, our church, and friends and family. We thank you, Lord, and let your Holy Spirit be with them at home as well as us that are here, Lord, uh, conducting this service for our friends and our churches and anyone else that is viewing this morning. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So this morning, uh, I want to just share from the book of Luke 12. Uh, Luke 12. So if you have your Bibles at home or if you're, uh, we're going to be reading from the book of Luke chapter 12. And we're going to read from verse 1 to verse 12. Luke chapter 12, verse 1 to verse 12. Luca is a full of Alleluia. Alone fai mumua, say fa nata mai, il is full of Alleluia. Ole atato fai tau mumua le nanana fa sa mua, ya umala ion tato, se atla ia il nanana fa petania. Fa bell on Fatawina, who are lofty might and not say to a tele, but over all I in the Fisolo I. On the Fitalai more more leo yesu yonaso. He or to Matala in a day a fear or to in a mere fat fitter for silo. Olona winger, Lola to fa fear, I'm your tongue. O mere umma lava or lona tia or their far leer. O me a little more forty, or they are far illoina. O the melia, O the melia, Sia se upu tote tautala toy the polyuli, or they are far illoina lava in the mala malama. Sia for se mea tote musu musu at toy, eat a linga or tanata, is a upu, is a potu tapuni puni, or they are la maina illuma the fali. Awoe-o-awoe-o-te-fa-yatu-yatu-o-to-awoto-te-ma-te-tau-yai-la-to-o-e-fa-sio-ti-le-tino-awai-le-ai-si-si-me-e-to-no-fa-ya-e-i-la
you had to say, you look more tonight. If I pay now for you, if I know how to, it is a talent or a talent. You look more or how you look more to it. Our lady, our lady, fifty years old. You look more tonight. If I fifty four years old, you look more or how you look more to it. Our lady, fifty years old. You look more or how you look more to it. Fat man, hello, yeah. Our lady, our lady, fifty five years old. Now, now, yeah. เลฟายอุปุยละเทเลียร์ชนะเจ้าเลฟามานาโลเนียเลียเอาเลเลฟายไฟเลียนั่งมาเปียเลฟามานาโลอินเลียฟายอุปุสเอ่อท่าฟาย
In the next few weeks, we'll be here in this chapter talking about these warnings that the Dr. Luke gives us. But today, I just want to share with you on the first warning, or the warning more more. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't be a hypocrite. Lord, if I sound more, I will if I fall in them. I too many this and another lots of my so we have to be pillow. See that. The Bible tells us that a hypocrite is someone who puts on a mask and pretend to be something that he's not or she's not. Bill and Ben that's how we win a the umpule or the fat for linga. A low fire there or say or say teunga, or say mask. Ah, a ufiti ai. The more you hope for linga, the more you love linga. Hypocrisy is the claim to be a follower of Jesus, and yet you live like the devil. Or the pepelo, or the fai maila, or oil the soil you sue, and the other payos ti apolo. That's what Jesus was warning his disciple. He said, "Don't get." To be like the Pharisees. I've essay out told him not to live or the Pharisee. Just like what John 1, 1 John 4 20 says. Whoever claims to love God yet hates brother or sister is a liar. What a perfect example of being a hypocrite. For whoever does not love his brother and sister, whom they see, cannot love God whom they have not seen. Say in that church. Because God sees us. No matter how we try to hide what's going on as followers of Christ, God sees right through us. The I told me to fight their might and find no fear. You know what they say? That distance uh, is good for a relationship. That if I don't see you, I love you. But we're not that. That's not the church. The church loves its people. The church loves each other. Let's not get in the spirit of the Pharisees. You know, because if we do, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to miss out on Christ. There's going to be a lot of people that are not going to come to church. We cannot live, proclaim to be followers of Christ, yet we don't do as Christ told, tells us to do. Wow. Oka. Semea. Whoever that may be. God is saying, Church, if you want to be the church, don't be a hypocrite. If you want to be a follower of Jesus, let's learn to love everybody. Isaiah 43 says, There we go. But my name is Isaiah, so let's live up by you with fire. Fire to yell a lot of my life. You are so far, my own mercy. I will talk to the fifth thing. Fauta or Lord to a tour. Say amen. 
You know, when Jesus, Luke wrote this and it started at the beginning, in the first three verse, he warned the disciples about being a hypocrite. He warned them, don't be like the Pharisees. And I'm reminded of what, of what Mark chapter 7 says. Jesus and his disciple just came back and they were eating and you know in the Jewish tradition you have to wash your hands before you eat just like what we're going through today you wash our hands like a hundred times a day to make sure that the virus is not is not uh, we're not contaminated and we don't contaminate others so when Jesus and his disciples came why are your disciples eating without washing their hands? But listen to what Jesus said. He replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrite. As it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teaching are merely human rules. You have let go of the command of God and are holding on to human tradition. That's what Jesus is talking about. Human tradition. We let go of what God wants us to do and we hold on to the things that maybe the that is cultural or maybe things that we've done in the past and it's not even written down in the Bible but we hold those as truths. That's being a Pharisee. Because Jesus says, guys, you're so worried about the washing of hands. It's like you're more worried about the outside. You wash the outside of the cup and the plate, but yet inside of the cup is so dirty. Jesus said, clean your inside first. If you're going to follow me, learn to follow me. And Jesus said, but Jesus is saying to his disciple this morning, saying to us, my friends, don't act like that. Wow, friends. I'm saying, that's not the church. The church, let's not fall into that. When we make the tradition, sometimes we have to look at what we're doing and how we're living. Is it tradition or is it the word of God? Say amen. Let's not let our worship be in vain. Because Jesus warned the disciple, do not We need to learn what it really means to follow Jesus. It's not about keeping a set of rules. It's not about a bunch of do's and don'ts. It's about loving God and loving others. Say amen. amen. So after he gives them that warning, and after he tells them, don't be hypocrite, Jesus goes on and he preaches to his disciples, and he tells his disciples, and he tells them this. He says, don't fear. Don't fear people or things, but you know who to fear? He tells them, fear God. Fear 
Thou told me by tell, I will find the fifth day the coronavirus. Say amen. amen. He said, don't be scared. Even during this time of the coronavirus, the prophet Isaiah 34, 35 verse 4 says, Say to those with fearful hearts, Say, be strong and do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with a vengeance. He will come with divine retribution. He will come to save us. I know that the answer is on its way because God said so in his word. Whatever we're going through, he will save us from this virus. Don't fear man, but fear God. Listen to what, what, what the Lord tells Joshua, Joshua 1 9. God commanded Joshua, he said, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. What am I saying to you? Be strong and courageous. Again, Isaiah 43, verse 1 says, But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you says, Do not be afraid, for I ransom you. I have called you by name. You are mine. You and I belong to Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. God has us in his hands. No matter what we go through, God has us in his hands. If it's the virus, if it's sickness, if it's people speaking out against you, if people are not with you, the Lord said, I've got you in my hands. And I like what he says. As he said in our reading this morning, in verses 5 to 6, he says, I tell you whom to fear, fear God. Then further down he said, what is the price of five sparrows? Two cents? He says, aren't you more important than a whole bunch of sparrows? God thinks of you and me. This is how important you are to God. He knows every single hair that's left on your head. Even if you cut your hair bald, God knows. That's how important God you are to God. And he says, friends, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of whoever can harm you. 
But let me tell you something else. I care for you. I love you. I love you more than anything else. He goes on to say, don't be scared. Don't fear a man, but fear God. And then he goes to say, don't be ashamed. I want to fight by fire to tell you soon. But I want to my to tell you soon. Don't be ashamed to proclaim your faith. Don't be afraid to talk about Jesus. I want to fit it to tell you soon. To tell you soon to turn no longer anger. To tell you soon to turn no longer anger. To tell you soon to turn no longer anger. Who are so desperately in need of Jesus. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Because Jesus says, if you're ashamed of me, or if you don't talk about me in front of people, I am not going to talk about you in front of God. He's encouraging us. Hey, reminding us that we as a church need not be afraid of speaking the truth, of speaking the gospel of Jesus Christ. No matter where God puts you, live the gospel that God has given us. He said, don't be afraid. And then lastly, he says, don't be afraid to say what I tell you to say, or don't be afraid of what you're going to say. Jesus tells his disciples, when you're dragged in the courts, because somebody is there with you. And that person is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of the Lord. He said, at the right time, he'll give you the right words to say. Don't be afraid of what you're going to say. Somewhere in there, Jesus throws this into to his disciples and tells them, he says to them, if you blast me, if you say things against me, you'll be forgiven. But if you blast me, the Holy Spirit, you will not be forgiven. Why is that thrown in there? And what does that mean? Well, if you're thinking about this verse, and if you're thinking, if I've done that, then I, I'm going to say, well, if you're thinking about that, then you haven't did it. Because sometimes we, we don't give thought to what we do. We don't give a second to... Uh, or we, we don't give deep thinking of what we're doing if that's the Holy Spirit. But I'm here to encourage you this morning. What that is saying to me is, if the Holy Spirit comes and, and tells me and convicts me and I heed the conviction, then I'm not being saying anything against the Holy Spirit. I know that there's only one sin that is not forgiven, and that's the sin of not accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Holy Spirit's job is to bring conviction, is to tell you that you're a sinner, is to tell you that you need Jesus. But if we don't listen and obey what the Holy Spirit is saying, then where are you going to stand? The Bible says, without the Holy Spirit, no one can be saved. But the Holy Spirit does everything he can to speak to our hearts. Not only to the hearts of the believers, but to those who need to know who Christ is. Because 
Because sometimes we're fearful of telling somebody about Jesus because we don't have a lot of uh, Bible knowledge. That we don't haven't read enough of the Bible. You don't need to know the whole Bible. You just need to tell your story. How has Jesus changed your life as a believer? How did you come to know Jesus? What was said that convicted you? You can come to Jesus however you are. You don't have to come to Jesus like the way the Pharisees come to Jesus. You come to Jesus any way you want to come. But I'll just say, please come. You can be a drunk and come and Jesus will save you. You can be an addict and come and Jesus will set you free. You can be the worst sinner there is. But when you come to the Lord, the Lord will forgive you of your sins. That's what uh, Jesus is trying to tell us. In these times that we don't know, if we're not certain if tomorrow is going to be there, or if you're going to be there tomorrow, Jesus has said, friends, do not be afraid. Don't be scared. Oh, fifty. Only God can do that. So this morning, I just want to encourage our friends and our church family that's listening. God loves you. God loves you more than you'll ever know. But I also want to remind you, now is not a time to be masquerading. Now is not a time to be pretentious of who you really are. If this message spoke to you, and if you feel like uh, there's a conviction, there's something happening in here, maybe God is speaking to your heart. I believe every one of us have something that we want done in our lives during this time. This is a perfect time to draw close to the Lord. Closer. To be at the feet of Jesus. Not a time to say that my church is better than your church. That my preacher is better than your preacher. God is not looking for who's better and who's not. God will give for his people that really love him. And not only really love him, but really love others. Let's make that our prayer this morning. Let's say, Lord, if there's a Pharisee spirit in me, cleanse me of that. Because sometimes church people, we kind of not whole, but sometimes we can be Pharisees. For me, I don't want to be that. I want to live the life that God tells me to live. But I need Him to change me. Because at the end of your life, at the end of my life, it's not how much you know. It's not how much you memorize the Bible, but it's how much the Bible has changed your life. It's not the way you dress. It's not how many letters that comes after your name. But the truth of the matter is that Jesus changed your heart. That Jesus changed your heart about your own life and that Jesus changed your heart towards others. Well, we don't try to hold up others to the standard that we're living. But we say we are the grace extended that Jesus Christ saved me. I know he can save you. That Jesus Christ, you're good enough for him. If you're good enough for Jesus, you're good enough for me. Why? Because he loved us. He loved us with the love. It's beyond anybody's comprehension. The 
I don't know why Jesus loves me, but I know he did. And with that same love, he wants me to love others. And that's a word of encouragement for others for you. I'm just saying, where are you at? Maybe you're not a hypocrite. Maybe you're not a Pharisee. But where are you at when it comes to sharing your faith? Are you afraid? Well, as we heard this morning, don't be ashamed of Jesus. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of Jesus. Talk Jesus wherever you go. Share Jesus wherever you go. Let the world know that Jesus saved. Let the world know that the rapture is at hand. Let the world know that Jesus is coming again. I hope you're blessed this morning. But before you leave, I just want to pray for you. And wherever you're at watching this morning, if the Holy Spirit is working in your life, just yield to what he's saying. If he's asking you to change this or change that or let go of this or let go of that, do me a favor and just follow the, and obey what the Holy Spirit is saying. Would you pray with me? Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Just as you spoke to your disciples in this passage, telling them, do not be like the Pharisees. We ask, Lord Jesus, that if there's any Pharisee ways in me, in us, in your church. Let us let go of those things. When Andrew came and he told them, do not be afraid of anyone or anything because you have us. You've got our backs. And even through this uh, time where, of this virus that's going around, Lord, you're telling us, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Lord, we're asking you to give us that faith. Give us that faith to say we're not afraid of whoever and whatever that our world is going through. We're not afraid. We're not afraid because we know just as you care for the sparrows, you care so much more for us. You care so much more for us. Lord, we thank you for your encouragement. How it is so important for us to talk about Jesus in our families, in our neighborhoods, in the jobs or wherever we we are and we're God. And even during this time on Facebook, on Twitter, on the social media, help us, Lord, to use those avenues to share our faith, to share how good Jesus has been. a time as this, just as uh, Mordecai told Queen Esther, Esther, God had put you in that position for such a time as this, and help us as a church to realize that God has put us where we're at for these times. Help us to be the church, the powerful church of Jesus Christ. To reach whosoever, to reach down to the to the darkest pit, to extend the love and grace of Jesus to the worst of sinners, just as you did to us, to be the worst sinner. Lord, we thank you for this morning. We ask your blessing upon our team that comes and 
does service for our church folks. Protect them, Lord God, from any viruses, from any germs, not only them, but also, Lord God, for our church family. Remember Pastor Vito this morning. He's not feeling well. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you reach out and touch his body. Whatever it may be going through his body, we ask in the name of Jesus that you heal him, Lord God. Not only him, but maybe those that are, are watching are sick also. And many in our church that are ill, And everybody say, 